Welcome back to the VSL Aviation YouTube channel. I'm Seth and this is episode four and our final episode of the engine series that we've been doing. So in episode one, we talked about the crank and the cam. In episode two, we talked about the case. Episode three, we talked about the cylinders. And in episode four, we're gonna talk about the propeller, and then we're gonna go take a look at an engine that's all together, including the propeller that's on the airplane. And you can kind of see how it all comes together. So first, let's talk about our propeller here. Our propeller is directly connected to the crank. So I've got our crank from episode one, that I'm gonna take over here and put on the propeller. Now I'm not gonna bolt it down, but you can see that that bolt pattern lines up exactly with the propeller. <clears throat> and this hollow crank is what delivers oil to our propeller. Now, in a Cessna that has a fixed pitch propeller or a Piper Warrior or Cherokee, whatever you're doing your training in, you wouldn't have this step. But if you're doing any flying in an Aero or a Bonanza or anything with a constant speed propeller, you have to have a mechanism to deliver oil to your propeller. So you can actually see we've got some sludgy oil happening here in our propeller hub. And that oil is the leftover oil from uh, the oil that's used to drive the, there's a piston in the front of that uh, propeller that's able to twist these blades uh, back and forth that create the different bite of air and changes the amount of thrust that our propeller puts out. So in order to keep a constant speed, that's a critical component. Also, while we're looking at the propel propeller here, we can see on the front part of our propeller, we have these counterweights here, and up here is a gas spring. In fact, you can see a valve where we would put nitrogen in there. That gas spring is to oppose the force of the oil pressure from the back side of the propeller. So engine oil pressure is forcing oil into one side of the propeller, and the counterweights via centrifugal force or centripetal force, I don't know, I always get them confused, uh, those counterweights and the gas spring are forcing it back the opposite direction. So this is a full feathering propeller off of a twin. So it looks a little bit different than your propeller that would be on your Aero or your 182. Just to let you know, it's not gonna look identical on your airplane. The other key component to our constant speed propeller system is an additional oil pump, which is also known as a propeller governor. So this gear interfaces in the back of our engine right here, and it spins and creates additional oil pressure that then sends oil up to our propeller. The way our propeller gets its oil is kind of interesting. It goes from the oil governor through this line that's bent around so it fits around the engine. It fits to the front of our engine case. So the case gets high pressure oil from the governor into this orifice right here. And on the back side of this, remember this is where our main crank sits. And that high pressure oil is shoved into the bearing right here. Now, as that flows into the bearing, it flows around the bearing and into the hollow part of our crank through this hole right here. And this hole, remember, is spinning at 2700 RPM, so it's not always lined up. So it has to have enough oil pressure to provide uh, a constant oil supply to these two holes, which then send it in through our hollow crankshaft, which ultimately goes to our propeller. Anyway, I think it's really interesting about how, and I've said it before, but it's really interesting at how all these components, again, 1920s technology, are working in a really complex way to make sure that all these disparate components work together as one unit. And that's really interesting. So speaking of that, we're gonna go look at the airplane and see how all this looks when it's put together in one engine that's mounted on the airplane. Let's go. All right, so here we are on one of our Beechcraft Travel Airs, the same engine that we had taken apart. That's the Lycoming O360 A1A is put together right here 
in all of its beautiful complexity. Now, hopefully the goal of this whole video series is now when you look at one of these engines, you're not just seeing a bunch of wires and tubes and funny looking things. You know kind of what each of these components is and what they do. So pointing out what we talked about, we have our case right here. This is our left-hand case side. You can see the holes where the push rod tubes are connected. Remember our push rods ride inside of here. And now you know that each of these push rods interfaces with an intake, uh, intake valve or exhaust valve. Now you can see the valves each have a tube connected to them. This is our intake valve. It's always the clean one, right? The exhaust valve is always connected to the corroded tube. That's because this has, goes through a lot of heat cycles, so it tends to corrode faster than the intake. The intake is basically cold air coming in. And then we have these wires that are connected to our spark plugs, and those spark plugs go into the holes that we saw at the tops of our cylinders. So each of these cylinders are bolted to the case. You saw in the video how that happens. So you know that internal to each of these cylinders, we have the pistons and the rods, which are connected to the crank. And each of these pushrod tubes are interfaced with the camshaft that sits at the top. So you can kind of mentally picture what that looks like now. Now here at the back of the case, we have all of our accessories. So we talked about this in the case episode our accessory gear case in the back, we have those gears that are connected to the crankshaft. And those series of gears are turning things like our magnetos, our vacuum pump, our oil pump, and our fuel pump. In some engines, we also have our generator or alternator back here. In the Lycoming uh, style engine that we're looking at today, the alternator is actually belt driven on the front of the engine. So that brings us up to the front of the engine. So here at the front of the engine, we have our oil cooler, which sits right here. And remember, our oil cooler takes oil from the back of the engine uh, that goes through the device called the vernotherm. And that's the thermostat unit that tells if the oil's hot or cold. And it sends oil that's hot through the oil cooler. So this oil cooler is getting direct uh, kind of uh, airflow from the front of the engine and that's nice clean cool air and it's going to help cool down that oil to the right operating temperature. The other thing we have here is of course our propeller. We already talked about how the propeller is connected to the engine uh, and now we know that since that direct connection is happening as I turn the propeller I'm actually making the pistons move as well. Uh, in fact, if I were to mic up the oil tube over here, as I pull the propeller through rotation, you could actually hear the air leak by the cylinders. So when you move the propeller through, which again, you always want to make sure that the propeller or that the magnetos are secured uh, and that you've done a hot mag check on this plane, which I have. So this is a safe airplane. Uh, but as I turn the propeller, it should be kind of hard to move through. And the reason that's hard to move through is I'm building compression in those cylinders. Compression is happening. So uh, imagine again that hospital syringe, you put your finger over the end of the syringe and try to push, you're going to build compression and not be able to, to push it all the way through. What you're doing is you're compressing the air. And that's exactly what's happening as I do this with the propeller, is I'm compressing the air at the tops of those cylinders. That's why it's hard to move through. The last thing we'll talk about is how we get this whole system started. Now in the old days, we would come up to the propeller, we would throw the propeller around, that would cause the pistons to move, the crank to move, the crank would cause the case uh, accessories to move, the accessories including the mags would start to turn and the mags would fire, they would cause the spark plugs to spark, combustion would start to occur, and the propeller would start on its own. So you've probably seen even modern uh, days we have planes that we have to hand prop. Uh, you've seen people throw the propeller down and the engine begins to start. Well, of course, we don't usually do that now. Usually we just turn a key or we press a button and the engine starts on its own. So what we're doing when we actually do that is we're moving a starter. The starter in this engine's case interfaces with this flywheel right here you can see there's a flywheel drive that's around the edge that has these geared teeth on it. Uh, in just a moment, I'm gonna show you the starter and how the starter uh, uses electrical force to come out 
it, it sends a little Bendix arm out. It interfaces with this gear and it spins the propeller up. So this is the actual starter and you can see the starter teeth right here. And this one you can tell is bad because that drive is actually sheared off. But what would normally happen is that would uh, go in and out of the starter and it would either interface or not interface with this chain gear uh, or uh, flywheel, which would actually start the engine. So this is essentially, it's pretty heavy. Uh, this is just an electric motor, which spins this gear around, which in turn spins the propeller, which in turn spins the engine, which starts that self-sustaining system with the magnetos and the combustion. Well, that wraps it up for our engine series. This four part series on the engine is designed to help you have a better fundamental understanding of how this engine operates and its failure modes. I wanna do more content like this and I'd love to hear your, uh, your thoughts in the comments of how this video helps you learn the engine and what type of systems you'd like to see next. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching, see ya.